is up squad, it is your squid, aka Jules Santori, the anxious squid, coming at you with another one of your favourites. It's a video for the Storytime playlist, number six in the playlist actually, uh, and it's a playlist consisting of Australian history stories that I find interesting uh, and that I hope to entertain you with, or at the very least inform you about, because I don't think there's enough Australian history as yet on the internet, uh, specifically on YouTube. On this channel I do reaction videos, just as often as I do these history ones, and I also chuck in the odd travel vlog or slam poetry video, uh, or question and answer, whenever I travel, uh, perform my slam poetry, or hit certain milestones on here. If this is the first video of mine you've stumbled across, my predominant focus is the Australian history and reaction videos, uh, there's a new one of those each week, so feel free to have a poke around the channel, decide if you like me, then hit subscribe. Uh, don't go anywhere just yet though, because this video is a fun one and you'll want to see the rest of it before you go off and do all of that. Today's video is a bit shorter than usual for the story time videos, so to all my regular subs or, or the people that have watched other content, let me know if you like them longer or shorter in the comments section below, do me a favour. Uh, maybe rewatch the Antil one and then come back to me about this one in terms of length. I'm still working out the, what the, the majority of you guys think. Um, or, or like based on my analytics and I expect that it'll be much easier if you just tell me. Um, that way I can mix the guesswork and, and focus on the content. Uh, I can continue fleshing stuff out and uploading 15 minute long clips if you guys want. Uh, I'm having fun either way. Uh, I enjoy it both times. But uh, but my data says you're, most like, uh, you're mostly only watching 5 to 10 minutes on average per video for this playlist. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll chuck a poll on my Instagram tomorrow and see what you'll think. Uh, give me a follow on there and, and yeah, vote. The graphic's just up there. As you can see, I'm a pretty heavily tattooed person by most people's standards. So um, it's probably not surprising to you that I really enjoyed researching this video uh, and I found it very interesting to, to look through all the old pictures and stuff. I hope you enjoy watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, I am going to tell you one more time though to, to hit that red subscribe button just down there. It says subscribe and it'll help you, you know, subscribe. Um, join my Patreon if you're in a position to help. Soon enough it'll mean this stuff gets to happen more than once a week. Uh, and, and failing both of those things, just give my video a like uh, or share it on your socials if you enjoy it. Uh, there's over 400,000 minutes of video uploaded to YouTube every minute of every day, including all of my stuff. Um, so I'm fighting an uphill battle for visibility here. Literally everything you do helps, and I'm extremely, extremely grateful for all the help I've had thus far. You guys are the real MVPs, all of you, so uh, thanks for watching me and, and helping me to be seen by others. How about we actually get cracking on the history, though? Does that sound good to you guys? Cool, because it sounds good to me. <laughs> Today's story starts in 1916, where a man named Fred Harris opened a small tattoo shop on Sussex Street in Sydney, New South Wales. Like most of my videos so far in this playlist, that's uh, roughly here, and I just hit my funny bone. Um, eventually, I'll widen my range to all of Australia for these stories. Uh, next week, I have a video about the first Australian to do a whole lap, for example, in his boat, uh, but I digress. Sussex Street is in the Sydney CBD, uh, which is within driving distance from the content of most of my other videos. Uh, so my apologies to the rest of Australia. I'll get to you soon, I promise. That being said, for a period spending more than 35 years following his 1916 opening day, Harris would absolutely dominate the tattoo trade in that space as well. So I'm going to say it's relevant. A cursory Google search for Central CBD Sydney Tattooist at the time of writing this in 2019 brings up the location of 17 separate tattoo parlours, all with a varied amount of individual artists or styles in their studio, but definitely no fewer than two or three each at any given time. Low key, I think the best in Sydney at the moment is the tattoo movement on Enmore Road, so if you hit up Bubsy, Dan, Jason or Deepak and tell them I sent you, uh, they might give you mates rates. Or they might not. Uh, I'm not their boss. I haven't discussed it with them prior to doing this. Um, but yeah, I think they're brilliant. Uh, between all four of them, they've done all of this, all of my tattoos, so I can vouch for their quality. Um, and yeah, there's about four tattoo studios within walking distance from them in Newtown, uh, but I believe they're genuinely the best, and they've got over 35 or 40 years of tattooing experience between them. Uh, Fred Harris's tattoo studio was the only one in the wider area in 1916, and it was considerably smaller than the four or five person studio you'd walk into on Enmore Road. 
From what I can see, Fred was doing them on his own, and it was unlikely that he had a posse or, or group underneath him learning the tricks of the trade uh, as he went. There were no apprenticeships under Freddy, uh, at least in the early days, let me just put it that way, because um, tattooing was not anywhere near as high demand at that point in time, or it wasn't in as high a demand. Uh, it still very much had a social stigma attached to it with criminals. Fred Harris's customer base consisted mostly of sailors, which will come as no surprise to anyone interested in tattoo law. Uh, that's L-O-R-E, by the way, not L-A-W, but you knew that. Fred's customer base were mostly sailors, in a nutshell, because there are many old navy or sailing superstitions related to tattoos or tattoo work, which led to something like 95% of the sailors at the time being tattooed. There are almost too many superstitions to count or list, but I'll give you some anyway, because I think the more well-known ones are kind of quirky. Um, sailors believe that getting hens and pigs tattooed onto their body I have a, a hen and a pig here, I'll show you up in a graphic. Uh, they believe that would in, it reduce their risk of drowning at sea. Getting tattoos uh, of stars would help them find their way home from long journeys. Uh, propeller tattoos supposedly helped in their lack of desire to drown. Crosses on the bottom of your feet prevent shark attacks when you're thrown overboard. And yeah, like I could seriously go on for hours about the superstitions these blokes had. Um, it's, it's likely that Fred Harris played on them as much as he could, I guess. Repeating stories like a gossiping hairdresser to his customers, maybe. Uh, considering it was paying all his bills when they got inked, I, I, I would keep those superstitions up as well. Maybe he was a surly non-talker, I don't know. Harris's tattoos were not only limited to sailors, despite them being the majority of his customer base. Uh, he also tattooed horses onto jockeys, flowers on, on those who were ahead of their time, fashion-wise. Uh, and just wanted something pretty. He tattooed boxing gloves on prize fighters uh, and so on. Once the war began in 1939, and that's World War II for those of you that don't know that offhand, uh, Fred's tattoos took a more patriotic turn. The majority of his work for the period when we were at war consisted of Australian flags or, or of Union Jacks, such was the uh, Australian loyalty to the Crown and its allies at the time. Tattooing soldiers' names and regimental numbers uh, became popular choices, and, and he would ink other things like native flora and fauna, or the Eureka flag, for the less Britishly oriented Australians. Uh, on one side of my neck, I have a black cockatoo, for example. It's been suggested, though I found it incredibly difficult to prove either way, uh, that the birth of the iconic boxing kangaroo image occurred in Fred's, uh, in Fred's shop on Sussex Street. Uh, it's an image I would say every Australian is probably familiar with, given it's our national national sporting flag, according to Google. Uh, but just in case you aren't picturing it, I'll, I'll shove a graphic just up here. Yep, that one. I know, right? That flag was first used in the 1980s, uh, but the concept of a boxing kangaroo was written about as far back as 1810, so they, they can't claim ownership of the idea, the flag makers. Truth be told, it's absolutely impossible to prove either way who the first person to put boxing gloves on a kangaroo were. Um, the notion that it was his design certainly isn't impossible, though. Uh, and I know you like it. I know you know that I like a quirk with in my history stories like that. So I'm going to run with it. Thankfully, unlike the stories I've told you guys uh, to do with John Horrocks, the guy that was murdered by a camel, John MacArthur, the guy I thought was bipolar, and Henry Antle, the founder of Picton. The camera had already been invented for about a hundred years and was in regular use by the time Fred Harris rolled around and decided to make his permanent mark on, on the skin of our history, one might say. Uh, there are loads of pictures of his canvases and his workspace now available online, uh, and I think they're superb. I don't know about you guys, but I spend way more time than is necessary watching tattoo content on YouTube. And in my opinion, despite it being around 100 years ago, um, and Fred being a pioneer of the trade, he's actually not that bad at his craft. He's pretty good, even, and, and anyone decent these days is standing on his shoulders um, in the standing on the shoulders of giants sort of vein. Uh, he's certainly better than some of the stuff I've seen come out of Ink Master on YouTube, at any rate. Uh, but don't let me convince you. You've already seen a bunch of my favourite works of his uh, in, in the graphics that I've been putting up here to try and keep your attention. Uh, they were digitised by my favourite source in all of Australia, the State Library of New South Wales. You can see the entire archive yourself with over 9,000 photos in the link in the description below. I'd love to hear what you think is uh, his best work. Send, me, send it to me on Instagram. That's it for another video though, guys. Don't forget to find me and follow me on all of 
these. Tattoo your name onto my subscribe account down there by subs uh, subscribing, hitting the subscribe button, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you when I look at you. You'll see me when I look at me. No, you'll see me when you look at me, and I'll see you when I look at you. Cheers, guys. Thank <laughs> you.